So um, I see that the, if I read the descriptions, that the focus of your work has to do with creativity and with brain sets. And I don't know what those terms mean, so if you could define them for me, that would be Okay. Good. All right. Uh, creativity is the ability to produce novel and original ideas and products that are also useful or in some way adaptive. So that's our working definition of creativity. I use the term brain sets to to describe the biological equivalent of a mindset. When you're in different mindsets, it changes your perception, your paradigm, and the way you look at the world. The same thing happens when you activate different brain activation patterns. Uh, they actually change the way you perceive the world, the memories that you can evoke, and also the way you engage in problem solving. So different brain activation patterns are associated with different ways of looking at solving problems, um, hence the name brain sets. Okay, great. And how did you, um, what is your background? How did you get into this particular kind of work? I'm a psychopathologist by training, and I originally got into this type of work because I was very interested in the psychopathology that's associated with creativity. So certain types of mental illness seem to be associated with creativity. That is, highly creative people seem to have greater risk for mood disorders, especially bipolar disorder, certain schizophrenia spectrum disorders, as well as drug and alcohol abuse. And I was very interested in this connection and hoping to find some way that we could reduce the suffering that seems to occur often in highly creative people and maintain that creative spark. So can you tell me a little bit about the processes that you use, that you've developed? The, the particular model that I've developed, which I call the Creates Brain Sets, is a set of seven different brain activation patterns that are associated with highly creative brains. They have been collected through brain imaging studies, through EEGs and uh, psychophysiology, and they are also reported anecdotally in the biographies and correspondence of creative luminaries. And how is this particularly um, applicable to our, our association members, to coaches who perhaps don't have the strong psychological background or medical background? What's interesting and I think appropriate about the Creates Brain Set model for coaches is that it helps you to understand different aspects of the creative process and ways that you can engage clients in specific aspects of the creative process simply by changing their brain activation patterns. And these can be done by fairly simple um, motivational or behavioral suggestions. For instance, exercising actually changes brain activation patterns. Meditating changes brain activation patterns. And if you can understand which patterns are associated with which aspects of the creative process, and you can also understand which aspects of the creative process your clients are deficient in, then you can use this knowledge to increase their creativity and their effectiveness in their work. And, and presumably also reduce a lot of the suffering that's, that's tied into Indeed. the in, embedded patterns. Right. Can you give me a couple of examples about, um, from your own work about how this works? Okay, so you mean people that I've actually worked with? Yes. Okay, um, let, give me a minute to think about sure. this. So I want to think of particular examples. It's funny that people don't specifically ask me about this. Okay. So one person that I've worked with was very, very good at generating new ideas and came up with an idea every two or three seconds, it seemed like. He had a whole notebook full of ideas, but he had never actually implemented any of the ideas. By understanding his brain sets and where his mental comfort zone was, we could then stretch his comfort zone to include some of the brain activation patterns that are more associated with implementing rather than generating creative ideas. I mean, that's a great example. That's the kind of a thing that a coach is looking at very often. Um, a, a 
a very um, well-developed facility in one area, mm -hmm. but underdeveloped in, in this case in, in implementation. Right. Great. Can I ask you for one more example? Of course. Okay. And then on the other hand, um, I've worked with people that are very good at implementing other people's ideas. Uh, they're very goal-directed, uh, they know how to solve problems, and they know how to go through an implementation process step by step to generate good results. But they're always using other people's ideas. And one of the things that's very important today, especially for people who are working with executives, is executives need to be idea generators. So they may be good at implementing ideas that already exist, but in today's rapid change climate, that's not good enough. They're going to have to come up with new ideas or find ways to get those ideas out of their employees. So one of the things that you can do with the creative um, creates brain set is identify those brain activation patterns that would be helpful to such a man. And this would include, for instance, the absorb brain set and the connect brain set. The absorb brain set is a receptive brain set which allows you to be open to ideas that are being generated um, in what I call the research and development parts of the brain, which are beyond the prefrontal cortex, below the level of conscious awareness. And people who aren't good at generating ideas often have ideas, they just can't access them because they're filtered out through a very strict filtering process um, by the conscious prefrontal cortex. And again, what I hear you describing is that your method would allow them to stretch beyond mm -hmm. that limitation and into areas that perhaps they don't think they could do, something like that. So our main process goes like this. First of all, we identify a person's mental comfort zone. And this is the brain set that they find most comfortable and it's sort of like their default brain set. Once we've identified that, then we can start the stretching process. Here are exercises for other brain sets that will allow you to go into other aspects or stages of the creative process that are difficult or uncomfortable for you now. Another really important part of the process is learning to switch back and forth between brain sets. So in psychology, we call that cognitive flexibility. In coaching, it's called cognitive agility. But cognitive agility is extremely important and one of the things that we work, work on in my model. Um, and if, if one of our coaches wanted to learn how to, to use your material, how would they do that? Well, my, my suggestion is that if you read the book, Your Creative Brain, you'll have some ideas about all of these different aspects of um, implementing the Create's Brain Set model. It will help you to understand what your own mental comfort zone is, where you might need to increase um, your facility with brain sets, and also some ideas, motivational ideas, about how you can affect change. One of the big ideas that I've incorporated into the book is to use um, re rewards or contingencies to help people condition themselves to feel more comfortable in different brain sets. Um, what do you think the next steps are going to be in your work? Hmm. Well, I look at the Creates Brain Set model, which now includes seven different brain, brain activation states, as a very preliminary uh, model. As we learn more about our fabulous creative brains, the model will expand and will probably change somewhat. So I'm continuing to work on that by working with additional people and gathering additional data and looking at advances in neuroscience. We hope that we can perfect the model to a greater degree. That's great. Um, anything in particular that's struck you um, from your experience at this conference about how your work impacts these coaches or or how um, how you might shift it or or continue to grow it in the field of coaching.
One of the things that I have noticed is as a um, clinically trained or, um, well, I'm gonna start that over. <clears throat> One of the things that I've noticed as a research psychologist is that we use slightly different language than coaches learn, than coaches use. So one of my goals now is to learn the coaching language and to get sort of the basics of coaching down. And once, once I've learned that, I think that um, I will be able to adapt the model so that it will be more easily accessed by coaches. Yeah, if we come onto a com common language base, it would mm -hmm. actually be a lot easier. Yes, because there are so many concepts that are very similar in clinical psychology and in coaching. And whether your goal is to reduce human suffering or to advance um, performance to its highest peaks, most of the mechanisms of behavior change are the same. And there's no reason that we shouldn't be incorporating what we've learned in one field into the other field. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.